Hey guys, welcome back to On the Middle Shelf. My name's Amanda and today I want to share with you my favorite books that I read while I was on my hiatus. Okay, so if you're new around here, you may not know, but I took a little bit of a hi hiatus. Um, it was actually almost a year long. Um, I did pop in a couple of times here and there, but for the most part, I really haven't been sharing what I've been reading for almost a year since like November of last year. And so I went through all of the books that I had read since then that I have not shared with you yet. And I picked my favorites. I have 11 on this list because I can't do things in even numbers. I don't know. And so, yeah, let's get into this. Like I said, these are all books that I have not shared with you yet. So um, one of the reasons that there are no middle grade on this list is because I did do a wrap up for middle grade March and that's where I read the bulk of my middle grade books. So if you are interested in my thoughts on things that I read middle grade wise during my hiatus, you can check out those videos. Um, but Let's get into this and see which books are on this list. Like I said, variety of genres. They are not in any order at all. They're not grouped in any way, shape, or form. They're just written on the list in the order that I thought of them. So let's go down the list. The first book that I want to share with you that I cannot recommend enough is Going Zero by Anthony McCartan. This is a book that I first heard about on the podcast currently reading. They did an episode at the end of their season where they do listener presses, which is where listeners of the show can call in and recommend books. And this was one of the books that was recommended on that podcast. So this is a book that is set in the US and it is as if the company Meta, so like Facebook Meta, got into cahoots with the CIA um, and they are trying to sell the CIA a program for how they can track people. And so in order to prove to the CIA that they have this software down and it works well and that they can, they think it's just going to be, you know, groundbreaking for the CIA, they get 10 civilians that have signed up for this that they are going to try to find. So the civilians have to try to go zero or go off the grid and they get a 48 hour I believe head start and they get to get that head start and then at that point they have 30 days to find them if they can remain hidden for 30 days they get three million dollars but if they if the company finds them they're out so, um, and it follows in particular one person that is one of the civilians that is playing this game that proves to be a little bit more of a challenge for the company than they would have previously thought. And so it just kind of goes from there. It's told from multiple different perspectives. You get the main person that you're following, but you also get information about the other contestants and how they're being found and what's going on with them. You get the point of view from multiple people that are working within the company and the challenges that they are trying to face within the company. And it was very thought provoking and very interesting and very just compelling. Like it's one of those that you just wanted to keep going, keep going, keep going until the story was done. And so yeah, highly recommend going zero. All right, the next one that I want to talk about is a romance book. This is The Love Wager by Lynn Painter. Um, I read this a number of months ago and it was easily five stars for me. I loved this book um, and it really all stemmed from the opening scene. The opening scene in this book was chef's kiss amazing. It was hilarious. And so this book follows Hallie and Jack. Um, Hallie has kind of been in a rut as far as dating goes and as far as life goes and she is bartending at this wedding when she ends up having a one night stand with one of the guests and just kind of like crawling out of his hotel room the next morning and never wants to see him again. And then she is going through her dating app when all of a sudden who pops up but this gentleman that she had this one night stand with and he tries contacting her. They end up forming a friendship and then they place a bet on who is going to find love first between the two of them. They're, they kind of become each other's wing people and I'm sure you can assume what goes from there but it was 
so fun, so funny. Um, definitely has a little bit of a spice level to it. Um, so, and it definitely has language in it as well. Those are the two things that I'm trying to pay more attention to because I know those are the two things that people care the most about when it comes to romance books. Um, but so there is language, there is some spice in this one, but I just thought it was hilarious. I love classic rom-coms where there is a heavy comedic element to it. Ah, uh, so good. So this one was a winner for me for sure. All right. Another romance book that I read that I absolutely have to recommend is Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. Abby Jimenez is hands down probably my favorite romance author. Um, she is a local author to me. I've seen her speak a number of times, um, met her, met her dogs, like the whole shebang. She is a wonderful, wonderful person. But on top of that, her books are so good and so well thought out. They're romance books, but there's always a deeper element to them that I think just brings that just a little bit more to maybe a classic um, smutty romance sort of situation. Um, so I really enjoyed this book. This follows Brianna and Jacob. Um, they are both ER, ER doctors who end up fake dating. And the thing that makes this book a little bit different is that it shows the, or it, um, has anxiety representation in it. Jacob so, suffers from pretty severe social anxiety and it really goes through like how he's feeling things that are difficult for him and how Brianna can help him and help accommodate that and um, just support him through some of those more difficult things that he faces. And I loved seeing that on the page. Now, I will say caveat for this book specifically, I did feel like it drug out a little bit. Um, so the whole fake dating element, you always get into the, well, it's just fake. They, they can't actually like me. They're only pretending. It's just fake. So I know I'm catching feelings, but they can't be catching feelings. And that whole thing went on for way too long in this book. So it definitely drug out a little bit, but it was hilarious. There's a parrot in here that is so funny and a grandfather figure that is hilarious. So there are definitely comedic elements to it, but there's that, that more intense... Um, serious aspect to it as well that I just love about Abby's writing and so definitely have to recommend yours truly. Um, definitely language in this book and a little bit of smut as well so keep in mind. All right another book that I wanted to recommend or that I read that I really enjoyed because it was very thought-provoking for me and that is One Summer in Savannah. This is by Tara Sultan, no Tara Shelton, can't even read my own handwriting, Tara Shelton Harris. Um, and this I thought was going to be more of a romance book. It is definitely not. Um, this book follows Sarah who um, had an experience when she was in high school or college where she had um, somebody sexually abused her. And through that experience she became pregnant. And it kind of goes through how she dealt with that um, and something happens with her dad medically and she has to go back to this town that she was from that she has not been back to since that happened and so she has to go back because that's where her dad lives and she needs to be there for her dad because he's going through this medical issue and it was very tactful very interesting to read about a person that has gone through something like this that this happened to and how the fallout from that from the town from the people from everybody that's involved um, her family his family acquaintances the whole shebang and so it definitely um, like it, it was just very thought-provoking very good um, really really enjoyed it enjoy. I don't know if that's the right word for a book like this, but it definitely made me feel things and I will definitely be reading more by Tara Shelton Harris. So, all right. Um, next, I told you guys in my like welcome back video, I have been reading a lot of romance. So over half of these books I think are romance books. I have two more coming up next. 
Um, the first one is The Fake Out. This is by Sharon M. Peterson, and this is for my clean romance girls, whatever, or guys, whatever, whoever wants to read it. I love Sharon M. Peterson. I follow her on Instagram. She is a trip. I love her so much. Um, but I read her first book last year. Um, it was called The Do-Over. And this one is called The Fake Out. And I loved both of them. Like I just found them on NetGalley randomly and decided to try them out. And or the first one, I just decided to try it out. And then when I saw she had a second one this year, I immediately requested it because I loved her first book so much. And this one is so fun. It is about a librarian who is just kind of going through it. She, her family has some um, medical expenses that she's trying to support them through. Um, fam, or her mom is going through some medical stuff and so that's where the medical expenses are coming from. So she just has a lot on her shoulders. She has a really horrific, horrible ex-boyfriend who is trying to make her life miserable. And she ends up running into a football player, a famous NFL football player in town that's just like there to kind of be off the radar for a little while. And she is just like not impressed by him at all. She is like, I don't know who you are. I don't care who you are, whatever. And he is obviously she's playing hard to get. And so he is into that. And it is so fun. They end up fake dating because he needs it he needs somebody to pretend to be his girlfriend for some publicity issues and things go from there but it is so good it's so it's clean it's funny it i just i cannot recommend sharon m peterson enough she is a very small author and so go check her out if you are into clean romance books i cannot recommend them enough so yeah that's the fake out and then another one that is also a clean romance book that I love. I believe this one is self-published, um, but I heard about it from someone I follow on Instagram and I can't remember, the book script maybe on Instagram? Um, and this is American Gauntlet. This is by Allie Lewis and this follows Danny and Joss. They are, Danny is a weightlifter and a like a bodybuilder-ish not really, more a weightlifter. She's just very into working out and um, all of that sort of thing. And she ends up entering this reality TV show that is kind of like a challenge, physical challenge, mental challenge sort of situation. And you enter in pairs. And so her and her sister decide to go in together and to try to get on this reality TV show. And so they do, they make it onto the show and she's so excited. And then she ends up, kind of getting into a little bit of a showmance with one of the other contestants, even though she really does not want to be, she can't help it, and it goes from there. But the thing that I loved about this book is all the different challenges. I love reality TV, I love The Amazing Race, I love like Survivor and that sort of thing. I just think they're so interesting and so fun. And so all of the different challenges and the way that they live within like a small community for a set amount of time and the relationships and friendships that you make with your competitors, but yet they're also your competitors. And so it was just fun. And then also the relationship between her and her um, showmance person was so believable because of the way that they interacted with each other. So sometimes it's like that insta love, like, boom, we're in love, let's get married, you know, whatever. And this was not that. This was kind of a slow roll, slow build up, and I loved it. This was so, so good. Um, so definitely go check this one out. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's self-published, but it is two thumbs up. All right, so now off of the romance train for a couple and the first, well, the first, <laughs> no. Um, the next one that I wanted to share with you is Drowning by TJ Newman. I know a lot of people have been talking about this one and for good reason, this book is so good. So this is TJ Newman's second book. Um, both of her books have been about airplanes and so I read her previous one and I really, really enjoyed it. This one is even better. Um, so this is about an airplane that is taking off from Hawaii, I believe, and something happens and they end up going down in the ocean. And so it, they go down in the ocean, but because of the way things happen, there is like an air pocket 
in the plane and so there's people alive in the plane and so the people on the outside are trying to figure out how to get these people out of the plane without everybody dying and it is so good it goes through how the flight attendants handle the crash and handle everything and the people that are in the plane and the people that are outside of the plane inside of the plane mainly we follow um a guy and his daughter and then on the outside of the plane is his soon-to-be ex-wife and she is trying to assist with getting them back out and saving them and it was so good so good made me tear up like what um yeah highly highly recommend all I can say. All right. Next one is totally going in a different direction. This is my only nonfiction on this list. Um, I have not been reading a whole lot of nonfiction this year and especially none that have like really hit home for me. Um, and on top of that, this is a Christian nonfiction, which I definitely don't jive with a lot, which is odd because I identify as Christian and I just, I don't know. Anyway, I digress. Um, but this is Enemies of the Heart by Andy Stanley. I found this book because I was on my Bible app looking for a Bible study to do and I came across the Enemies of the Heart Bible study and I read the first day and I was like, I really like this. And so I'm assuming this is based off a book and so I'm going to look up the book and I ended up listening to the entire book in like a day and a half. Um, because I was just really into it. So this book really tackles four different enemies of the heart and the specific things that you do to combat them. And so it it was just done so well and so applicable, applicably, that's not a word. Um, it was very applicable, we'll say that. Um, the writing made it so that you could read the book and say, okay, this is how I can apply these concepts to my life. And I love that. And it was just very clear, very concise, short to the point, And I really appreciated it. And so I couldn't go without recommending reading this book. All right. Next on this list is a historical fiction book because yes, I have read a couple historical fiction books. Um, and this is They Went Left by Monica Hesse. I loved this book so much. Um, I actually physically read this book and it was so good. In this book, we follow Zofia who was a um, prisoner at a concentration camp during World War II. This book starts right after the war ends and she is being released from the hospital where she was taken um to heal after her time at the concentration camp so she is being released from the hospital and she is trying to find her brother um who she has not seen since they were separated when they were first taken to the camp so she has not seen her brother and she is trying to find him and so that's really the point of the story is her going on this journey across Europe to try to find her brother and the people that she finds along the way the help that she finds along the way the community that she finds and um all reflecting back on her experience in the concentration camp this book was so unique so well done and just a very different perspective of World War II and I loved it so definitely recommend they went left all right next is a contemporary not a romance just a contemporary and that is Iona Iverson's rules for commuting this follows a community of people Iona Iverson is a woman in her 60s who is she's still working and she's just finding it very difficult to fit in with the younger crowd at work and she's trying to keep her job and stay relevant and part of her daily um, routine is that she commutes and she commutes on the same train every day and she sees the same people on the train every day but never talks to any of them and doesn't know any of them until one day one of the people on the train starts choking and one of the other people is a nurse and assists the person choking and because of that a lot of people start talking to each other and this group of friends forms and it just kind of follows Iona through kind of her life over the course of the next few months following this and how, how she develops this community of friends 
with these people that she commutes with every day. And it was so good. It was so uplifting and so just like, it just warmed my heart so much. Um, I loved this book and now I want to read Claire Pooley's first book, The Authenticity Project, because I love the way that this one was written. So, all right. And then the last book that I want to share with you is another romance book. And this is a book that I read at Christmas time last year. And so it's a Christmas romance, which I thought I would mention mostly because we're coming up on Christmas time this year and somebody might want to read it this year. So um, this is called The Plight Before Christmas by Kate Stewart. This is one that definitely has language in it and definitely has a lot of spice in it. It is very spicy. But it also has depth to it and the relationship in this is so relatable and it is hilarious. It follows Kate who is massively down on her luck. She's got fired from her job, her car died, she's just like hitting all the road bumps that she possibly can and she is going to spend a Christmas with her family in their cabin in the Smoky Mountains and so she comes up to the cabin she's there and all of a sudden her brother arrives and brings a friend with him little does he know that this friend that he brought with him is actually Kate's ex-boyfriend from college who she did not have a very amicable split up with and she's not happy about the situation because now she has to spend Christmas with her ex-boyfriend. What could, you know, what could go wrong sort of situation. And so it's so funny. It's so fun. It's a family Christmas with all the different traditions and fun things that happen with that. But also this relationship and tension between, um, who is it, Whitney and Eli and how they go from really the animosity between them and how that kind of fizzles and turns into something else um, as the book goes on. And so while it is steamy, spicy, that sort of situation, while there is language in it, I still really loved the aspect of family and the just the fun of Christmas in this book. It definitely made me smile and swoon a little bit and I just, I loved it. So Anyway, those are 11 books that I have read during my hiatus that I really, really enjoyed and would highly recommend if they sound like they're something that you might be into. Um, if you've read any of these, I would love to hear your thoughts about them down below. Um, they are all also linked down below, so be sure to go check them out, and that's going to do it for today. So I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you stick around and subscribe, and until next time, see ya!